Hey y'all, this is Rachel over at Moonlight Library. I thought I already started filming, but I guess I didn't. Anyways, welcome me back. It's been a while. I have not been reading too much, but here we go. We're going to do a wrap up for the past three months of my reading. That's August, September, and October. I was like, let's just put them all together. I haven't talked about these books yet, so I might as well just do a wrap up for all of them. Come back here a little bit, like be like, hey, I'm Moonlight Library, you should subscribe to me. Like I'm back, kind of. Anyways, we're gonna start with some of my standalone slash first books in series and then go into my series that I'm reading. Notes on an Execution by da Dania Kukovka. Oh my God, this book is so, like one of the best books I've read this year. This will be on my top like five. I, I mean, I'm gonna do a larger than top five video at the end of the year, but this is 100% like one of the best books. If it's not on that list, I'm so confused. Obviously I read 10 books better than this. Impossible, impossible. Anyways, this one, it follows, it's about a serial killer, yeah, a serial killer on death row. And it's this man who killed some women or women. And you're primarily though, you're following the women surrounding his life in the past from the time he's a child up until the present day. And you're also following him as he counts down to his like death penalty. It's beautiful. It's heartbreaking. It's just like, oh, you know, it feels like you're just taken through this whole journey and you're just like, oh, he'd like, you understand that feeling. Like, I know you know what I mean. And that's how I feel. Beautiful. Like, so the sentence structure, the characters themselves, the storytelling, the way that everything kind of comes into itself and like the symbolism, everything stunning, stunning. Year of the Witching. This is by Alexis Henderson. I've been wanting to read this one for so long because Alexis Henderson, I read House of Hunger last year and I was obsessed with it. I was like, this book is so amazing. I cannot wait to read her like prior book and I can't wait for her to come out with anything else. Like she is so good at like this weird horror vibes happening. This is kind of colonial-esque, colonial-esque America, but we're in this small secular, I guess, closed in village called Bethel and we are following our main character, Emmanuel. And she was born to a mother who had her out of wedlock and her mother had died and was like seen to be a witch or something. Her mother had gone to like these, like the bad woods. I don't remember. Dark wood. That's what it's called. And Emmanuel is now like 16 or 17. Everything going on. There's like a curse happening and her finding out about her past, but also learning about the problems within the community she is inside of, like the church and religion in general and the religious extremism that her community follows, learning to break free and find out more about what she's a part of. So good, haunting. I guess there's supposed to be a sequel. Like I saw that and I was like, what? Hello, what is that? Um, can you put that out now? Alexis Anderson, can you just, finish writing that and then I will be reading it because <laughs> this book, amazing. I will read anything by Alexis Henderson. It's automatically a five star. It's just like automatically a five star. Next up is Juniper and Thorn by Ava Reed. I read online, a lot of people were saying that the synopsis doesn't really say what the book is gonna be about or they were misled by the synopsis kind of. I don't really know. I don't, I don't read the synopsis of anything that much. Like I'll read the first couple sentences and then I'm like, okay, I get the gist. This feels like a fairy tale. We're in a fictional land and it feels very like fairy tale folklore-ish. Our main character, her name is Marlin Chen. And somehow this kind of reminds me of We Have Always Lived in the Castle. A little bit, a little bit. So she has a very strict father who is the last like wizard in this community who like the community has mainly moved away from magic and is more so becoming capitalistic and more industrialized. So he's the last wizard and her and her three sisters are witches and they're like the last witches sort of thing. He's very, very controlling. But Marlin Chen 
and starts to get out of her shell and learn more about this community. It is more so a contained story within this town. It's not so much about the world itself that we're within. I don't know. There was something about this book that I was a little bored by, a little unrealistic, or not unrealistic in this, it's a fantasy, but I just didn't really fall for everyone. Didn't care enough. I thought it was interesting. I thought the concepts and the characters were a good time, but it just didn't really hit the way I wanted it to. I ended up giving it three stars. Overall, it was good. I had an okay time reading it, just not my favorite. Divine Rivals. <laughs> this book. <laughs> This is by Rebecca Ross, and I loved it. I loved it. I am a divine lover, divine rival. I have a standalone video about me reading this, and I had so much fun. So we're following Iris. At first, it feels very like 1950s journalistic newsroom. They're all like typing on their typewriters, trying to get the news out. And she has this like arch rival. There's a war going on with these like divine entities. And then it like, it becomes almost like World War One foxhole stuff, you know, and you're like, what? And I just, I was swept into this story. I was consumed by this story. This is the first in a series, or I think it's a duology, and the new one that comes out next in December, I think. I'm, I'm not quite sure. So, or maybe it's already out. No, it comes out in December. Who knows? You can look it up. Anyways, I love this. I did really love the love story, but there were a couple things that I was like, okay, not my favorite, but you can watch my spoiler filled video. That, that's really all I have to say here. So I, it was the vibes. It was the vibes. The vibes were so good. Next up is another book club pick that uh, we had. This is the Heaven and Earth Grocery Store by James McBride. I'd never read James McBride before. This is historical fiction taking place in the 19... 70s in a place called Pottstown, Pennsylvania. And we're following this Jewish couple. Well, we're kind of following everyone in this community or a lot of people in this community. But we start out with the this Jewish couple who own firstly a convenience store, this Heaven and Earth grocery store. And they also end up owning like a uh, concert hall and stuff like that. It becomes a primarily black community, but they stay there and kind of are engrossed in the community. And we kind of follow them through their journey and everyone else surrounding them and their journeys. It is definitely an epic tale within like, I think it's like 300 something pages and you get, oh my God, so much happens so many like ties so many interesting things i think i gave it a four did i give it a four yeah i gave it a four because at some points i was kind of like getting a little bored with the story it was a little long-winded but overall i did enjoy it so <laughs> there you go Okay, so next up are a couple audiobooks that I read. So I'm gonna ha have to go through those like this. And by a couple, I mean two. Conjuring the Witch by Jess Jessica Leonard. This one, we're following this woman who's in this very extremist, religious, Christian community where they're also kind of a commune thing happening like they're farming and stuff the women are supposed to be subservient to the men but this one woman is very much so like kind of pushing back she's like I, this isn't what i thought we were joining mr husband whatever your name was and then there's like some weird witch stuff happening and overall it was pretty good it was entertaining it's really short it has some good horror elements happening in it and once again we have witches and woods so what else can you ask for october i was trying to read like witchy books that's why i have a couple of like witchy books then the next one i read is everyone in my family has killed someone by benjamin stevenson 
I also really enjoyed this one. So we have a cast of characters, a large cast of characters, and our main person is Ern or Ernie. He is telling the story of what happened at like his family goes to his chalet or something and it's like blizzarding and it feels very much so like knives out, like closed room mystery happening because there's a dead body found. His brother, the reason they're there is because his brother is coming out of prison for murder and you're just seeing all this stuff spiral like the family everyone has something wrong everyone is up to something it is funny it's silly ernie tells the story in such a way that everything's kind of a joke he's a mystery writer so he's talking about elements of a mystery book within the mystery book and it feels very meta like you feel like you are looking at him composing a story of his story and how like elements he'd be like "Ooh, this could be a red herring but i'm here to tell you it is not a red herring or you might think that she murdered him but that's i like i would tell you that now it's really good so i gave it a four because also it was just like there was a lot going on i was like whoa okay so let's move on to my series we're going to start with one that i'm going to mention really quick because i fucking hated it. <laughs> so The Dark One by Nikki St. Crow. That's the second in the Vicious Lost Boys series. This is like a dark, erotic, reverse harem, Peter Pan situation. And I read the first one and I gave it a three. I'd I don't know what I was thinking because when I thought back to it, I was like, Rachel, no. I turned it into a two because then I read this one and I was like, oh my God. This is one of the worst books I've read in a long time. No offense if you love this book. This is not for me. I was just like, I like, you know, I love a neurotic book. I love that. I need some plot. I need some plot. I need some actual character things. They can't just be having sex for like 200 pages. It is so inane. It is too much. It's really annoying and it's boring, honestly. I just, I... I couldn't with it. I couldn't with it. And so anyways, I gave this one a one. I will not move for, forward in this series. There's no way I could. I just like, no, brain dump. I forgot about it. I'm done with it forever. And now I can for actually forget about it because I'm here now telling you about it. So we're done. Then I read, I'm going to hold up the first one, but this is not the one I read. This is Zodiac Academy. This is the only one I own. So I was like, I might as well just hold it up to show you but I read the second third fourth and fifth and sixth one in this series and yeah I became obsessed it was all I was reading in like August early September it was all Zodiac Academy all the time I couldn't stop talking about it I was just like completely engrossed in Zodiac Academy it's the most ridiculous book series I love it so much I give them all five stars because you know what my ratings they they're mildly meaningless. It's how much I enjoyed reading the book most of the time. So anyways, uh, Zodiac Academy, we're following two twins who find out that they're like princesses in this fairyland and they have to go to fairy college there, but no one wants them there because they're like, oh, like we all thought you were dead sort of thing. The magic system's crazy. I don't know how to describe it, but following them again, Tori and Darcy, I just like, I love them so much. I love the story. They sometimes get on my nerves. I love all the characters. The romance is really good. I got to the seventh one and there's like a big shift that happens between the sixth and the seventh one that I ended up being like, okay, I need to pause and I need to read some other stuff. I can't only be reading Zodiac Academy. I know they're only out to book eight right now, and I haven't been reading any of the side books either. Maybe I'll go back and do that. I don't know. Anyways, I really enjo enjoyed my journey in reading Zodiac Academy so far. And it is a really good stress reliever and just like easy to dive into. I was reading it on Kindle Unlimited because they're all on there, which is really nice. And that's what I have to say about Zodiac Academy for now. Last but not least last but not least we have uh court of mist and fury i finally read the second book 
I finally read the second book. My cousin was reading them and I was like, okay, I guess I should, I should read it. I'm, I'm going to read it. And no one's lying to you when they say the second book's better. No one's lying. It's just the truth. The first book we hate people. Anyways, <laughs> overall, I had a really fun time reading this book. We're following uh, Pharaoh who I guess I'm like, how do you even talk about this book without spoiling the first book? But we're following Feyre again, and we're also following Reese, and it's like a magical fairy land. If you don't know about this book series, then I don't know what to say to you, but I can only really tell you my feelings towards it. I love the newfound family aspect that's happening in the second book, and I also am loving like all the character development and the changes that happen. And I swear to God, at the end of this book, I screamed and threw the book. I was like, ah, and like, you freaks you out. Like, oh my God. And it's not all like silly cute or like anything like that. It's, it's dark and twisty and I like it. I like a dark and twisty. So in general, that's what I have to say about that. Whatever, I gave it five. Of course I did because I had a great time reading it. And that's how scoring works for me, for me rating things. Anyways, that's the end of it. Those are all the books I read in August, September, and October. And I'm back on booktube for now. I mean, I'll be back again, but probably not twice a week. That's too much. I'm, I'm always like, it's too much. It's too much. I can't do that. Like... Don't ex if I start doing that, just write in the comments, Rachel, stop doing that. You're going to burn yourself out. You're going to burn yourself out. Stop. Stop. Anyways, that's the end. Love you.